1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest corruption countries. scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. It's Thursday evening, 18th February 2021, and you're listening to the latest update from today's 1MDB trial by the Malaysian Insight. I'm Patrick Teo. The defence lawyer cross-examined the witness, a former 1MDB CEO, if he had abandoned his responsibility to pursue the truth and to protect the interest of the company. The CEO denied and said that the 1MDB company is a different animal. The court also adjourned early after an announcement of a COVID-19 risk. Ex-Prime Minister Najib Razak is currently on trial for four charges of abuse of power and 21 charges of money laundering involving 2.28 billion ringgit in public funds. <coughs> Judge Colin Lawrence Akera emerged from his chambers at 10.25 a.m. The 10th prosecution witness, former 1MDB Chief Executive Officer Mohammad Hazem Abdurrahman, then took his oath. For the past two days, defence lawyer Wan Aizuddin Wan Mohammed had been cross-examining the witness on the 1MDB and ABA joint venture for investment projects. Each party needed to pay US$500,000 to start the joint venture. Why do you think the initial capitalisation was not inputted by ABA? Do you agree that the initial capitalization of a company is very important? One Aizuddin asked. Hazem said yes. If one of the parties fails to subscribe to its company's shares, then the joint venture is doomed from the start, One Aizuddin said. Hazem agreed and added, The thing of key importance that I looked at was the fundraising. Both 1MDB and ABA were required to raise three billion US dollars to develop the Tun Razak Exchange TRX project. Let me understand your logic. So you were managing the fundraising more than the joint venture itself? Hazem said no and explained that 1MDB had raised their part of the funding, however, ABA had not. The lawyer asked if Hazem had nudged ABBA to complete its part of the agreement or raised to the board of directors about the failure to secure ABBA's initial capitalization. Hazem replied, I am not sure. I don't think I did that. It's very serious and if the joint venture is automatically terminated, this fundraising becomes useless, one Aizuddin said. Hazem responded that the joint venture is a government-to-government -government relationship between Malaysia and Abu Dhabi, so it will not easily fail just because of the absence of the initial capitalization. The lawyer then said, As the CEO, you have failed to see the implementation of the joint venture. You have to admit that. Hazem disagreed. He also said that the joint venture was never properly structured. One Aizuddin asked, did you raise to the board that ABBA did not raise their three billion US dollar part? Hazem said, no. The lawyer then exclaimed, of course not. You didn't even raise about the initial capitalization. Hazem said the chief financial officer will potentially present when the money is in and what the money is for. One Aizuddin asked if Hazem had a sense of urgency and Hazem replied that the proposed joint venture is all by Joe Lowe, referring to the fugitive businessman Low Tech Joe. I will ask you bluntly your promotion from the post of Chief Operating Officer COO to CEO. What has changed in your responsibility besides your change of salary? One Aizuddin questioned. I cover everything, Hazem replied. Including the joint venture agreement, the lawyer asked, if Hazem needs to protect the interest of the company. Hazem said yes. However, he did not abandon his responsibility because 1MDB, in Hazem's word, is a different animal than any other company. One Aizuddin proceeded to ask Hazem if he played a part in the drafting of the press release on the signing ceremony of the joint venture on the 12th of March 2013. 
Hazem said the head of communications did show him the press release. The lawyer said the content indicated there were two joint ventures in the Malaysia and Abu Dhabi partnership. You didn't alert that the press release was misleading? Hazem said no, because he understood it as only one joint venture. When the court resumed after a short break, the witness was absent. The deputy public prosecutor, Ahmad Akram Garib, informed that Hazem was notified of a close contact of his testing positive of COVID-19. He had had a meeting with this friend last Monday after the trial, which is three days ago. They were about two metres distance in the meeting. But they were in the same room for more than an hour, Akram said. Najib's lead lawyer, Mohammad Shafi Abdullah, raised that the court discontinue for fear of infection risk until Hazem gets tested. Akram also said that it is difficult to prepare another witness for the remaining time of the court session today. We are seeking direction from your lordship on the next course of action, Akram said. Judge Colin agreed, as reluctant as I am, we have to adjourn this meeting. The 1MDB trials will resume on the 3rd of May 2021. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by the Malaysian Insight. It was written by Haley Chong-Wee Kee. I'm Patrick Teo.